Hello everyone, this is Blender Guppy. Welcome to another uh, demo video for the Random Flow and the rest of the uh, Creative Bundle add-ons and also um, uh, maybe we could use Final Cut as well uh, or, or not but in this video I'm going to use Quick Displacement and random axis extrude, which uh, I think is not really uh, shown too much. Which, uh, yeah, it's not shown too much, or I don't really show too much in my videos. But let's try and use them uh, in this one. So, what I'm going to do is create an arc and use the uh, quick displacement on that. To create uh, like a rock texture and then in the middle of this we're going to create the mechanical structure that we're going to make it look like uh, it's kind of like a base using the random axis extrude and then with that base mesh I'm going to detail that either with in plated sets or with <coughs> random panels I'm just gonna turn on the screencast. So I still, uh, I mean, creative flow is Control Shift X, and random flow is Shift Q. And panel cutter and uh, also fast mirror is in the W hat key. If you have this installed as well, okay. Let's create the. Uh, arc so this is the right now this is the this is it's <clears throat> this global location is here i mean it's all, the object origin is in is here uh re represented by the orange dot you see here the small orange dot so in order for me to create a mirror of this i'm going to go to edit mode and trans Gra uh, move the object or move the faces in edit mode so when I rotate it it still uh, maintains its object origin so right now when I mirror, mirror this in the x-axis so the, the symmetry line of the mirror mirroring function uses the object origin so we're, uh, we're right now we're going to create the, the arc actually to make this curve really accurate we can just uh, I'll just use a face one go to one where is my we go there's this is my original to uh geometry extrude i'm pressing control uh control left mouse click to extrude this and then let them meet in the center or at the center Let's get them closer get them a bit closer that and the edges are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's make it at eight. And then selecting this ed edge loops, I'm going to use loop tools. So loop tools comes free with Blender. You can turn it on in the uh, uh, by pressing a four in the viewport and then going to preferences in the add-ons. You can uh, turn on the loop tools. Uh, add-on so it comes free with blender and what we're going to use is the uh, relax function and then i'm using after i use the relax function and i then use shift r to press shift r you can see here to basically um repeat the relax function like multiple times. Okay. 
Now we have our arc. Like what we can edit it more like that. Let's give it a thickness. Keep pressing everything, everything. Control F and then S to solidify. So Control F, you can see, you can see the highlighted letter in the special menu. So you can press just S. After pressing Control F, you can press S and not go, um, not go click the solidify faces using the mouse. Just press Control F and press. And then you can see uh, it's not like Babel where the operation is model. You can, after the operation is done, you can uh, open up the redo panel here or use F9 in the viewport and then set the thickness right here. Let's get rid of this face, flip it to the center, get rid of this face as well. And let's, let's try and make this. Uh, let's see, let's scale this to the Z axis, press S, then Z, press zero, and enter to confirm. So it's aligned. So it's uh, horizontally uh, straight like that. Okay, let's add more loops. And then Selecting these loops. Okay. Alt S. Make it make the uh, body rounder like that. Okay. Now we're ready for the displacement. I'm just gonna save this. Uh I think the displacement gets rid of the mirror. Let's see. I'm going to save the uh, base mesh first. Go to utility and increase the subdivision. Yes, it applies the mirror for the operation. Let's go. Okay. Um, quick displacement. So quick displacement, you can use clouds or noise or the image if you have one you can see it here uh, you can um select the image and then right here you can load up the image using uh load images right here and when you load up the image you can then use it for a quick displacement right here you can select it once it's in blender you can select it right here okay so but for this uh video i'm just going to use noise i'm going to create the um the uh uh the geometry of like the arcing rock or something okay so in order for us to see the uh, the effects of the texture we need to increase the subdivision so the cut property is right here along with the smooth fractal and normal and noise seed so these uh, five properties are all connected to this uh, so to the to the subdivision so increasing the subdivision increases the amount of faces that the script can play with or increases the fidelity or the of the uh, displaced texture the, fil the fidelity meaning meaning the resolution so we, we can see the sharp um, since the script is using another subdivision this, the same subdivision that's being used by the random operators in their script. So this is not the same as the subdivision modifier, which is a sub. This is the subsurf using the Katmal and Clark algorithm. So in order to smooth that, we're going to go here, 0.5 smoothing. Let's use one and then increase the repeat. We can, uh, let's reduce the subdivision first. So the more resolution, the less the smoothing effect is. Okay, so let's re uh, decrease this first and somewhere like 100. Yeah, just to get rid of those uh, sharp, um, 
sharp lines. Okay. So we're going to well I'm going to create the primary shapes first, then the secondary. Uh the first stage being that the the big shapes first. I'm going to displace that and then another application on quick displacement uh for the uh secondary uh displacement effect or texture. Okay, increasing the probably just 15 subdivision for now and um, increase the size of the texture and also the strength we can the noise basis you can select what kind of noise you want and just increase the size again and the strength to get our um arcing rock texture so we'll, we're only concerned about the uh, big shapes for now let's choose another one we can try this one but we need uh, for this exercise I need more mass here so let's try another one so I I made a quick quick displacement operator just to make this So when making this kind of effect, it's much faster. Instead of just setting up the displacement, the texture, the, the, the displacement modifier, then the texture, then uh, going through a def different windows just to manage the properties. But for this one, although this is destructive, um, every properties that you have to deal with are, are already in here. Okay, we'll have to choose one. Let's use this. Let's uh let's use this one here. Maybe we could shade smooth. There we go. And or not. I want to see what's happening. Uh, using the flat shaded smooth uh shading. So another um uh, this is our resolution for now. So another uh, round of quick displacement is another texture. Oops. So it's using the strength and the size from the past uh, from the previous operation. So let's set the strength to point one and set the size to point one as well. Okay, and the smoothing is also really okay. And let's try smoothing of ten. And the size is 0.5 and the strength something like 0.25. So basically the next application is much more subtle. Just smoothing repeat to five. So increasing the subdivision. So we have this. Let's see the. Let's uh, reduce the cut to two. So notice the difference between two and when I try subdivision four. So there's ne really not much of a difference. So uh, just use the lower one to save up the resolution in the scene. And let's try one versus two okay i'm going to try just the one okay. and um experiment with the other i'll, I'll go with this one and so division number two there we go we can try we use subsurf. So subsurf is added as a modifier. If I increase, uh, decrease this to zero, it's going to remove it. So this is added after the changes to the, or the displaced changes to the mesh.
And let's just destroy and remove this for now. Let's shade smooth and see what we got. Or yeah, see what we got. Okay, I'm going to build the building here. Or we can try the uh you can try a uh, UV sphere or you can yeah you can do something like this. Auto smooth, auto smooth to something like ninety. Okay, and plate insets, something like this. Uh, that, and you already have uh, something to render. You can add more stuff, but. As I've said, we're going to try and use the random axis extrude. So cube. And then increase the uh, subdivision. I'm going to delete these faces here so it doesn't get included in the random randomization. Also increase the subdivision again by adding more loops. And then selecting all the faces, use oh not do not select this. So if if you try the random operator on any any of the random operators with this kind of uh, topology or resolution, it's going to crash Blender. So yeah, this is optimized only for low to mid poly. Okay. Selecting everything, let's try and use the random axis extrude. So random axis extrude is, it will try and extrude faces in the X, Y, and Z axis. That's why it's random axis extrude. So you don't have to touch all of this. All, uh, you can experiment with the operate with the properties that I don't attach in these videos, but most I'm just going to uh, be touching the base cut, the iteration, source extrude axis. You can uh, the axis order means that um means that uh the faces that needs to be extruded uh, that will be extruded will be extruded from the x-axis first then second from the y-axis and third from the z-axis you can of course re reverse this order using this z y and x you can do that you can even do z z x okay but let's just use the default x y you're going to use X, Y, X and X, Y, Z. So source extrude means that the extruded faces, uh, will, there will be five chances that these extruded faces will be extruded from the source mesh, meaning that our selection or this object here is the source mesh. So there will be five possibility that five of those faces will be extruded from the source mesh. So X, Y, and Z extrusions uh, will can, is, it, it is possible for the uh, for them to be extruded from the source mesh. So X, Y, and Z, is, Z would have the, uh, both have five right now. Axis loop uh, means that the number of extrusion so for example, if I have source extrude of five and if I have extrusion of number of 10, so that means that five faces, uh, it is possible, uh, I mean, it is, uh, in the x-axis, there will be five, uh, there, there will be 10 faces that will be extruded and five of those can be extruded from the source mesh. And the rest can be extruded from the generated uh, extrusion like this one here. So this is, it can extrude from here or it can extrude from the subdivided uh, source mesh like that, okay? So if I show you this one here, source extrude. And for example, uh, this one has five. And Y has zero. So you can see that 
the x-axis is the only one that's really extruding from the x-axis from the source mesh. Okay, if I add y, you can see that. And z-axis, we don't have z, we don't have faces in the z-axis in the source mesh, but we have faces in the resulting geometry, randomized geometry that points to the z-axis. So it can, of course. Uh, it can, of course, generate from that from those. See, and the iteration means that the whole process, the whole script, will be repeated. Uh, use uh using this number here, so repeated two times, repeated three times. So, uh, but be careful with using too much, especially with the higher resolution or higher extrusion count because it can slow down Blender. There is random seed for each axis, but there's also a global seed. Okay, so let's go back to here. Random axis extrude. So we have the global seed, minimum length. Um, Yeah, so this refers to uh, the size of the face that it's going to extrude from so if you make this smaller like 0.1 it's going to on the faces that's going to be extruded are going to be uh in that particular small size based on the based on the uh, the length of the uh, longest edge in the face so and uh, random access extrude. Okay, it's good. Oops. Good. Okay. So, for example, if I decrease this to point 0.1, it's no more x. It's just from the y axis. And it extruded something here because in the x-axis it extruded something here because the faces meet the size okay so it's not really extruding from here in the x-axis because the faces based on the resolution that you're using are not that small enough so if you increase this res resolution Finally, when, when it goes small enough, there we go. So it's useful for just avoiding uh, uh, avoiding uh, faces that are too large and extruding from them. Okay, let's uh, create a mechanism. For the rest of the properties, we, we just have the length of the extrusion, depth max, depth mean. Uh, we have the seed. The threshold are the normals of the uh, extrusion. So, for example, here. So right now, 0.5 is the default, and this is the y-axis. So this, for example, is the y-axis, and extruded extruded is like extruded face like that. So if you increase the threshold uh, in the y-axis, it can actually you can capture this face right here because right now using the default value of 0.5 if we just uh, decrease this to zero and just okay point set this to two put this away Oops, not extruding. No, oh, there we go. There, so extruding from that face only. If we increase the normal threshold, there we go. So you can capture the slanted face. And if you use something high enough, like 2, then you can actually cover the z-axis. Or like, there we go. 
the z axis right there okay let's create the mechanical part let's set this to operator default base cut of five And by the way, if you they have the properties uh, are lined up in columns of X, Y, and Z. So even if you even if you set this axis order to Z right here, this column right here will still pertain to the Z, uh, X axis. The Z axis is right here, this column here. And the Y axis is this column here. Okay. Maybe you shouldn't. Maybe I shouldn't use this. There we go, and just use this faces here. Well, let's see, depth max is one, one, depth minimum 0.5, threshold scale max, inner cut pertains to the resolution of the uh, extrusion, the resolution of the body of the extrusion, set it to four. And having more faces at the in the body of the extrusion means that uh, more uh, faces for the uh, script to extrude upon from. We have the scale, so let's not bother with that yet. For this um, video, So if you reach a threshold where the operation is too slow, then you can just uh, apply the operation again and not really force, not really force uh, a single operation uh, by, uh, by using too much resolution or extrusion count. Where's the uh, global seed? Okay. And another one using the same settings, but I'm going to use a different. Of the vision count. Another one. So we're going to create the illusion of this having uh, like a floating city or something that have extruded buildings or and like ports. Okay. Now we're going to use plate insets. We're going to detail this using, uh, let's try random panels for now. And, oh, not bevel, bevel is destructive. And increase the, thick, the thickness. There we go. And let's use radial. This the subdivision. So 
So hopefully um, the texture will take care of the rest. We're just going to generate a geometry that looks that in combination with the texture will, will look really uh, convincing. Uh, that it looks like a buildings. Let's try it like that and then was going to use this going to use the random panels on the result of the random loop extrude as well s one so right now I'm going to use none even and you can see the result the extrusions is rounded at the sharp corners but it gets rid of the spikes but you don't have this yet uh, in the making of this video you don't have this yet so we're going to use the default and get rid of the spikes using the split there we go this will split the islands face islands generated in sharp corners but of course it will get rid of most of the most of the um, spikes there we go and another one here And uh, this one. There we go. So we have our arc and our floating city right here. So I'm going to use uh, the operate some spikes. The random cells again so i'm going to just test okay there it's already the faces are already providing me with, me with the right sizes so i don't really know i need to with the right size of the extrusion so i, do, I don't really need to increase the resolution of this maybe just one okay and increase this to point eight set this to one hundred or point set the offset to individual there we go and increase this let's try increasing this okay that may be too small that's maybe too small. Okay, let's just use zero subdivision. This one right here. Actually, let's increase this to 200. This one here as well. Okay, let's increase the subdivision for this one. Okay, let's break some stuff up some more. There we go. So, um, we broke, uh, we broken up the outer as well as the inner spaces. Okay, let's try and give this our basic vertex color. 
black and white and set this to island okay select let's select everything there you go and it's time to uh, generate the textures for this so i'm just gonna append the, the texture let me see if i still have the textures for the rock oops so so you're not going to see the window the or the append window because apparently obs studio does not record that uh, ground let's try the ground texture here and render this or test render this let's set the film to transparent and render all right that is we should have rendered it oh, we should have uv'd this before we displaced it you can try the seam right here so mark seam and unwrap so yeah so before you displace be sure to uh and uh you be seam then unwrap because as you can see it's taking too long for it to unwrap this way or maybe I should have just used the um, um, object mapping and not just UV mapping. That would have been um, faster in this case, but you know. So I think as Blender crashed, or maybe I should just close it. Did I save? Okay. Um, I think it has crashed. So I'm go going to close Blender. Okay, we're back. Oh, the topology is still here. Thank God. So we're just going to use uh going to up in the texture again. I'm just going to use the object mapping for the rack. Made a mistake of not. So before you before you displace, be sure to you be unwrap it first. The and the seams will be uh, inherited by the subdivided and displaced uh, mesh. I'm going to, to go to the ground texture and set the mapping to object. And I'm, I'm then going to set the uh, the projection to box because I'm using U uh, uh, object mapping instead of UV. For UV, you set this to flat, but for uh, Object, you set this to box. Box, box, box. There we go. And render. We don't. Let's set the film back to transparent. Then render. I'm going to edit the size of the texture.
There we go. I'm then going to append uh, the texture for the city. And there's one a bunch of spaceships that I've created recently, so I'll just I'm just going to use that. Selecting all the relevant meshes, go to the uh materials, assign material, branch metal, so I have, I have not given this yet, so I'm going to get rid of the quad structure, um, basically they're all angular anyway, so, and all square, so I'm just going to get rid of the quad structure and use limited dissolve, so this way I can use a uh, light map pack UV. So light map pack UV is create a, a UV island for every single face. The, uh, but which is this is actually quite handy for ingons. So I use this a lot for ingons. Now we have our UV. We just need um we just need to edit the size of the texture. Now we need to edit the lights. You can build your own light systems. Uh, this one, I got this one from the random starship file. Now we have the um, texture for the buildings and all the lighting. For the for the uh, what you call this the flora or the plants or trees, you can you you can just use another atom for that. I'm still looking for my own uh, version in random flow. So right now I can generate uh, rock, rocky structures using quick displacement. That but there's no uh, version for uh, trees or flora or flowers yet. Okay, to randomize something that randomize something based out of a geometry and it will look like a bunch of trees and plants. So that's the trick. But if you zoom in, it's not it's not really gonna, uh, you know, look like a specific tree or a plant. At some distance, it may look like a flora. It may function as a um, that kind of geometry. Let's play around with the lighting. See what we got. So let's try and increase the. Oh, okay. Let's render this in this window. And I uh, track lights, camera, no depth of field. Let's try home. And make. Uh, I think I'm right somewhere that increasing the focal length makes the structure bigger. I think for bigger structures you need increased focal length. I think that's what I read. Uh, we could stick to 60 or even 45. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, and just uh, uh, looking at this, just a few more additions, and you already have your concept art concept art piece. And then add your spaceships, your cloud effects, the sky. Uh, you can add your flora or trees and plants, other stuff. Other, um, you can use other uh, features in Blender that are not uh, supported by Redmond Flow just yet. Okay, so that is it for this video. And I hope you learned something about Random Axis Extrude as well as the Quick Displacement Operators. In the next videos, I'll try and use the other operators some more. Operator some more. So like final screws, um, flange couple, flanges and uh, couplings, random tubes, random cables. Uh, there's also a new feature, random cables, that I haven't released yet. And all the other stuff here. So the um, most of the videos you'll just see loop extrude, random panels. So hopefully in the next ones, I'll try and use the other ones some more that are not really use that much okay so yeah if you have any questions be sure to use the comment section or the links in the description thank you for watching and have a nice day